So first of all, any questions about anything so far? Anything we did? We're good? Awesome. So we we're talking uh, about week six now. Week six uh, introduces stacks and queues. And again, what is the abstract data type? The abstract data type is you know, the, the problem that we're trying to solve or the real world issue or you know, thing that we're trying to simulate in our, in our data, data type. Uh, so the real, pro the real world problem is a uh, stack, right? What is a stack? Well, the easiest example is a stack of plates, right? When you stack these plates, when they're dirty, you put the dirty one on the, on the top. When you start washing it, you start taking them off from the top. And so really, I mean, you could take away a plate from somewhere in the middle or somewhere in the bottom if you want to, but it's not that easy and it's not recommended usually, right? So the two possible operations, or I guess you could say three possible operations that you could do with this stack of plates is you can put a plate on top, which is called push. You can remove a plate from top, which is called pop. And you can look at the plate on top, which is peak, right? Uh, and this here is uh, called last in first out, right? So the last item that is getting into your stack is the first item that is going to be removed from the stack. Okay, and how we're gonna do this, same way we did with uh, you know, the previous data structures that we talked to about uh, the bag, right? What was the bag? Just an array and we can do certain things to that array. We can delete from the bag, we can look through the bag, you can insert in the bag, you can see how many things are in the bag. Well, similarly to the bag, this is going to be an array. We're going to start with an array. Uh, and we're just going to restrict the kind of operations we can perform on the array. And basically, we're only going to be able to add to either the beginning, if you want to call the beginning the top, that's, that's fine. If you want to call the end of the array the top, that's fine too. As long as, you're to rem as long as you remember to always just add or remove from one side of the array. So if you're going to be adding, you add, you add to the front. If you're going to be removing, you remove from the front. If the front is your top. Uh, uh, and there's going to be some, okay. And then the other one that we're going to talk about is a Q, right? And what is a Q? Again, Q is the abstract data type. What is the abstract data type? Well, like some kind of a real world problem, like we have a line of people. How do lines of people usually work? Well, the person that came first is the first one to leave, right? Which is F-I-F-O, first in, first out. Okay, so basically new people come at the end of the line or the Q and the first person to come leaves at, leaves at the front. So you add at the rear, you remove at the front. That's the queue. The stack is you basically add at the rear and remove from the rear, or you add at the front and remove from the front, if you want to think of it that way. So it's still an array. Both of them are going to be, we're going to be using arrays for both. Uh, the stack is actually simpler uh, to deal with because there's only a few things that you need to do. Uh, the queue can be a little bit more complicated, and uh, but don't worry, I'll show you. Uh, so I have the solution for P4, which is a few weeks ago. You had a P4, so if you want to look at that, look at it. And uh, I'm going to tell you first about stack. So let's look at the stack. And I am using I am using uh, a, lot of, a lot of material from this textbook, the data structures and algorithms in Java, uh, Lafour. Uh, he also has, I hope you found it already, there, it has a similar book but with, for C++. The C++ book was first, so this edition has a little bit more in it, slightly better. So I already told you what a stack is, right? The abstract data type, and I mentioned to you how we're going to do this uh, abstract data type in a data structure. One data structure to simulate a stack is an array. So we're going to encapsulate an array, we're going to put an array inside of a class, and we're going to limit the class to only have the operations of you know, adding and removing from the same side uh, in that array. Okay, And you already know that inserting is called push, removing is called pop, and looking at the thing on top is called peak. right? 
Uh, and there's some pictures in there, right? This is your stack, this is the top. You, so you're going to have some kind of a, you know, if, if you think of this as an array, which it is going to be an array, and these are the indexes, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So top is equal to 4. Top is just the index of whatever is all the way on top of the array, right? If you were to go and add another thing, then for top is going to increase from 4 to 5. So now the index of the element on top is where top points to. And if you are going to be uh, removing things, then top moves, right? If you're going to remove the one on the top, the top decreases by one. If you're going to remove another one, top decreases by another one. So that is basically all there is as far as stacks are concerned, okay? Uh, so that is uh, the access that we're going to restrict uh, and uh, stacks are also used for uh, memory right whenever you're whenever you're calling a function you push it on a stack whenever you you return from a function you pop it from a stack that is how it works if you if you take assembly you're going to see how that works out uh, but stacks are actual you know, things that are being used in, in pretty much almost at the hardware level of a computer. Okay, so microprocessors use stack-based stack architecture. Okay, when a method is called, its return address and their arguments are pushed onto a stack. When it returns, they're popped off. So that's what I just said. Okay, and the stack operations are built into the microprocessor. Uh, and again, they, there's some pictures in there. There's a different picture. The author, LaForce, shows of stack. You can have a stack of envelopes. Uh, this is uh, kind of, uh, that picture is more, well, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's a stack. Um, and of course, you can do different things. If you really want to, you can, you know, get, get and create a method which is going to insert anywhere you want. But we're just not going to do that for, you know, a stack array. Okay. Uh, and yeah, there's more, more examples. All right, so let's have a look at the stack. What is the stack? Well, let me zoom in on this a little. So like I said, we're going to have some kind of an array, right? This is my array, I call it stack array. Uh, we're going to have a size, how many things uh, total this thing can take. And we're going to have a top, which is going to be the index of whatever the top is that we want to have as top. Uh, your constructor, right, these are private, so they cannot be accessed uh, in any other way other than the methods that we create. All these methods are public, that way they can be used outside of the class by other classes and access these variables. All right, so as soon as you have a, so you have your constructor, which is going to take new size, that's what size is going to be equal to. You're going, you're going to make, make an array dynamically stack array is equal to new int size so make this thing as big as it needs to be and then you set top is equal to minus one okay so if there's no items or elements in the array yet you're going to set this to some weird number like minus one so you know it, you know there's nothing in it uh well actually it's not a weird number it's for a reason as soon as you put something on on the stack this is your push method right you're going to put something or push uh, a new value in the stack and this stack array plus plus top is equal to new value would that so zero? which one would that top, top? top yes so my question is let's let's uh, get this here out here. so let me ask you this let's say if I have uh, top is equal to minus one right and then I have <clears throat> I have a stack array uh, top plus plus is equal to new value okay how is this different than doing this what's that Okay, so what happens is, any, any other guesses? No? Okay. <laughs> so the bottom line is, at the end result, if I do a C out here, 
and I say top equals value of top is going to be equal to what? Well, if I do it one time, right? It will be zero. All right, top, all right? Uh, so in this case, top is equal to zero, all right? If I do it the other way, what is the value of top? Still zero, right? So the, the bottom line is if I have top is equal to minus one and I do plus plus, or I mean top plus plus or plus plus top, top is going to end up being zero, right? But when I do, uh, if I do it this way, right, what's going to happen is I'm actually using, what happens is it basically, do, we're doing this. So the one on top, it does, it will do a minus one here, and then it will do top plus, well, top is equal to top plus one, right? Which is now top is equal to zero here, right? So if I, if I do it this way, if I do it this way, that is what happens under it, right? That's, that's the effect. We're using a minus one, and then we're increasing the value, okay? Now, how is this different than this one here? Okay, well, this one, we're starting with minus one, right? But I'm going to increase the value of this before I even try it. So it's basically like doing, we're going to do top is equal to top plus one first, right? And then, so now top is equal to zero. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to plug in that value in here, zero. Okay, so that's why we're using plus plus top. Got it? Anyone have any questions? Are you sure? So which one would you, would you just do the top one on top? Is it that you got to do the bottom one. Yeah. Because how are you going to use a negative index? That's, that's not going to work. Okay, so that's that's the little thing that I wanted to point out to you. So the top ends up being zero at the end. Doesn't matter which one you do, but the value that you're plugging in makes a huge difference. Right, and and of course you you don't have to do it this way, right? You could have easily done this, you know. Instead of doing this here on top, uh, you could have said top plus plus, and then you can set you could have said stack array top. Whoops, square brackets top. And that that also works. Yeah, uh, I'll go with what the author is using. It's the shortest and smartest yeah do everything in one line if you can okay so that's that now that we know so that's what happens right so as we're starting with top is equal to minus one we're increasing it to zero as soon as we're inserting the ver the first value this thing becomes equal to zero and then stack array zero is equal to some new value whatever the value we're putting on top of the stack okay if we're going to be adding another one let's say top was now zero i mean yeah it was zero because we only have one thing, right? We're gonna add another one, second value, then top increases its value to one, and then stack array square brackets one is equal to that new value. Any questions? Can you say that again one more time? <laughs> so, all right. So it, it basically, what, what I'm saying is, every time you insert a new value, this thing goes up, right? So initially, we did stack array zero, right? Is equal to some new value like 100, then the second time we insert a new value, stack array one is equal to some other value. Yeah. So all, all that happens is we're increasing this value by plus one every time. Uh, okay. And that's it. So that's, that's how the stack works. So basically you have, uh, you're, you would have like an array that is like, let's say uh, initially we said, oh, new size is going to be equal to four or something, right? So suppose, Suppose new size is equal to four. So you have created an array of four things, right? First, second, third, fourth. You already know that these, well, these first two, this one's gonna be 100. Then the second one is gonna be 200. And what are the other ones going to be? Garbage, 
we haven't filled them up yet. Okay, so if I wanted to, if I want to go and add another one, right? I want to do stack. I want to do another push, right? Push another one. So I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna say two now is equal to 300. Then my array is going to look like this. We're gonna have a 300 in there. Okay, and again. Is that line code where it says void push? Use... Yes, that's what the push does. Yeah. So you just do that. Yes, if I as many times as I as as I can, depending on my uh, size. Can you just put it in the loop if you want? Sure. I could do a loop. Yeah, sure. Okay, but that's what happens. So you're filling up, you're filling up, uh, filling up the array. So which one is my top? Is it this one or this one? The last one. Which one's the last one? Okay, good. So this is my top. All right. This is tough. Yeah, the other one is your guess is as good as mine, right? Okay. Some some crazy number in there. Okay. Or it could be a zero, but not necessarily. Okay. So that's the top, and then in this case right here, right? This is the top. This is the top. So that's what we're doing. We have an array, and we just keep adding to it, right? So this is your push, right? Not hard. And what does the pop do? Well, the pop returns the element on the top, right? And this time we're using the top minus minus. So what that means is we're going to decrease the value of top after the fact. Does that make sense? So, all right, let's do the pop. So this is your push. Where's the push? All right, so this stuff is, uh, let's say push here. This is your push. Okay, so now we're gonna start doing uh, pop. So I'm gonna go in there, pop. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm calling the pop first time. Maybe I should move this a little bit higher so we can see it. All right, here's my pop. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm telling it, return stack array top minus minus, right? So it's going to return stack array of what value? Well, but what's the index? Uh, stack array three. Or two, sorry. Two, All right? So top's equal to two. This here top was equal to one. Okay, so stack array two, that's what top is. And then we're going to decrease top by one after the fact, okay? So that's, that's basically the same deal as, you know, having a plus plus, you know, having a plus plus and having a, where's the other one? Well, plus plus after, plus plus before, same thing with the minus minus, okay? So that's the first time I pop it, okay? This is uh, the second time I pop something, it's going to be stack array. So now this thing, and as soon as I do this, this one's still gonna be there actually. We're not gonna, we're not really deleting it, but now as soon as I do this, now I'm changing the top to one, All right? That's the purpose of the minus minus. Where does the stack rate, two, well, yeah, stack rate two go? It's just there? It's just there, still there, okay. yeah. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's just a regular array, it's still there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we haven't really, we can't really delete technically from an array. Uh, okay. all, we're, all, we're doing, all we're doing is we're just, we're having a pointer that moves around in the array. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, so now top is one, Right, if I tell it this is my second pop, right, array is going to be one, right? From before, then I'm going to decrease that thing one more time, right? And now the next time, top is going to be zero, okay? And then again, I'm going to do this one more time. And then when that is done, Actually, this time is the zero, right? Because we decreased it by one. And then the next time, top is gonna be like minus one. And there's no minus one. But basically, it's now it's ready. If I wanted to, I can, I can add a new element. If I add a new element, let's do another push here, right? Let's do a push. Uh, maybe I wanna push 400, okay? So again, how does the push work? 
we have a plus plus top and a new value. So now we're gonna go and do, we're gonna get this. We're gonna change this to 400 and then my top is this. Okay, so that's all there is as far as the stack is concerned. Questions? Not complicated, literally is like this long. That's all there is. That's a stack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Right there. Uh, can you refresh my memory why we were uh, defining integer pointer stack array? Because there's no way for you to. Um, so the reason question is why are we using a pointer for the stack array? Because in C++, there's no way for you to, uh, so let's say we're, we're gonna be creating a stack here, right? Stack A stack 10. So we're telling it we're gonna have a stack of 10 things. As soon as they say I A stack 10, I have to, I'm gonna pass this value 10 here, and then I'm going to create something with a certain size. That is the only way for me to create an array of whatever size I want as the program is running in C++. So that's just the only syntax available for me to make a, or an array dynamically for, in this particular case is if I use a pointer. Java use, does not use pointers. So you don't have to do this kind of stuff in Java. But in C++, you got to have a pointer. Okay? In order for you to make an, an array of whatever size you want inside of the constructor, you need to be using a pointer. Okay, I can't have like. It's just no other way to do it. Not in C plus okay. plus, but in Java it works without pointers, which is why I like Java better. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then what else is there in the stack? Well, you can look at the thing, right? Peek at whatever's on top, whatever the index on top is. You can check to see if it's empty. You saw that it's empty if the top is equal to minus one. You can check to see if it's full. It's full when the top is equal to the size minus one. Right. right, just the basics. That's it, that's all there is. So you, you go in there, you add a few things to the stack, uh, and then you can, yeah, you can use a loop to go through the whole thing and just pop them one by one and show them. And that's it. So what do you have to do for this? Well, you're going to implement a character stack, right? So I'm giving you an integer stack. You're going to use a character stack. The character stack uh, could be, well, not could be, but it will be something like a character array, okay? That's gonna be the actual stack. Uh, you're gonna ask the user for some input, and I think you're going to show the stuff in reverse. Yeah, so you're gonna, you don't even have to uh, ask the user for inputs, just make up some basic character array, and then show it in reverse, okay? Any questions? That should be, yeah. What's up? When you did the loop, um, you did an exclamation point. The, the loop has an exclamation point. Yeah, I, I forgot. That means not while the stack while it's not empty. So this 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 is empty returns either true or false, right? Yeah. So if it so this right here, this is kind of abbreviated. So top equals equals minus one, what is that going to be? It's almost like it is, it is the same as saying as if top is equal, equal to minus one, return true, else return false. So you can summarize the if and else with just that single line right there. Because this itself is either going to be true or false, right? So whether either it, top is either going to be equal to minus one and this is going to be true, or it's not gonna be equal to minus one, which is going to be false. So this thing retur returns true only when the array is empty, right? So what I'm telling it here is while, ba another way to say this is while a stock is empty equals equals true, right? Or while a stack is empty not equals false, right? That's, that's basically it, okay? Sure. So that, yeah, but the exclamation is the not, right? So which is the opposite of what this is supposed to be. So while it's not empty, basically. Okay. That's the easiest way. 
So this is a stack. There's nothing else to it. Very easy data structure. I think the easiest one, probably even easier than the bag, right? Because there's not a whole lot of stuff you can do to a stack. I mean, I could make your life more miserable and get you to do some harder assignments with a stack, but let's just keep it easy. I'll show you how to do it. I mean, if you can do this, I'll be happy, okay? Uh, other things that we can use stacks for are, uh, let's say if you're, you know how your compiler checks to see if there's matching parentheses. Well, what do you think the compiler is using? The compiler is actually using a stack to push things on the stack and then pop them from the stack. And if there's like a mismatch, it gives you an error. So that's, that's one practical application. Uh, there's also applications of you doing like prefix and postfix notations. Like you can, let's say for example, the number is A plus or five plus 10, right? That's how we write it, five plus 10. But then one other notation to be used is plus five, 10. Right, you put the first the, the operation first, and then the two numbers after it. Another way to do this is you can say postfix, which is five ten, and then the plus after it. So some of these can be done with stacks also. Okay. In fact, that's what some of these calculators are using. A lot of the calculators are using push and pop. That's what this thing was saying. Okay. So that's that, or some of the older calculators probably. Uh, okay. So this is your stack. And now let's look at the queue. Okay, and the queue is a little bit more involved because we don't have just a top. We're gonna have a front and a back of the queue basically. Okay, and all right. So again, what is a queue? A line of people, the new person arrives at the end and the first person, the one that came first, leaves at the front. So last in, first out, yeah. right? No, first in, last out, by first. Did I get it wrong? Oh, yeah. First in, first out, that's what I meant, okay? Uh, all right, so, but what we're gonna do is, uh, we could, like we've been doing, do the shifting thing. So I can go in there and I, like as soon as this person, the one all the way at the front leaves, you can grab all the other ones and shift them one place forward, uh, but that would take a lot of shifting. So to eliminate all those shifts, what we're going to do is we're not going to shift, okay? And that's what that's what creates the complication. So the the you know because we don't want to shift things around, the only things that the only thing that is going to shift is the index the pointer or the index of the front. So basically, let's say this, this uh, we have, let's say we have an array of how many of these? Six, right? So this is index zero, which is the front. As soon as I remove, as soon as this person leaves, my front index is going to go one backwards. That's it. So that, that, that's, that's what's going to happen, okay? And if I remove the second, play, the second player, my front is going to move one to the back, okay? So if I wanted to insert another player, so this is my rear, right? I would have a pointer that which points to which one is my last player, right? So I have six of these, the last one is going to be five, right? Index five. As soon as I enter, another player enters the queue, all you're going to do is you're going to, again, you're not gonna be doing any shifting or whatever, all you're gonna do is you're going to tell the index of five, which was the last one, move on to the left. So now index is six, because we have seven players, okay? So bottom line is, what's going to happen is both of these indexes, the front and the rear, right, are going to be shifting to the left, this way, all right? So what's going to happen is, you're gonna see it. So I, gotta, I have to show it to you instead of telling you. So let's look at the queue first of all. I'm already, I already had it open. Okay, so Q, right? This is your Q. I already told you how it works. And uh, yeah, here you go. So if you, you have a rear, you have a front, right? If you in, insert a new player, the rear shifts, okay? Uh, if you're going to be removing a, a player, the front moves, right? So this used to be the front. We're removing the front. The, the, 
the pointer to the front, the index of the front moves, you move another one, front moves again, right? So again, what if you noticed in bo both of these, my pointer rear and my pointer front, in this picture, they're moving up, right? In that other picture with the players that I was telling you, it would be moving left, but they're both moving in one direction, right? Because I'm inserting only, you know, these things are going in only one direction. I'm, you know, my pointers for the indexes are moving in one direction also. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, now there is uh, some issues where, well, that's that picture is not going to do it justice. And let me just show you the other one. So yeah, you can read through this, but let me show you the wraparound issues with a practical example. Okay. Uh, oh, and first of all, what does it look like, the code? Well, this is the code, right? You have a size, front, rear, number of items. Basically the same thing as the other one that we we're looking at, the, sta the stack. Right, except we're adding a front and a rear. Before we had a top, we had a size, number of items, and a top, and an array. Okay, so it goes like this. This is your constructor. Size is equal to whatever size they want. Uh, we're making an, a dynamic array of this many elements, size elements. We're setting front to be zero, and we're setting rear to be negative one. Okay, uh, whenever we're inserting, so let me just Jump back to the other one, All right? So this is this is a new queue, right? As soon as you create a new queue, let's say we had a a queue of size, uh, new size. What's the new size for this queue? How many elements I have? What's the size? Five, five. right? Five things. So that's my size. Size is equal to five. We're creating an array of five things, and I'm making them equal to zero just to indicate an empty slot that we haven't filled yet. And again, they're not going to be zeros. It will be just garbage, right? Maybe zeros, maybe something else. So this is, this is what it looks like initially, right? And then we have the rear is equal to negative one. We have the front is equal to zero. And the number of items is, uh, I actually need to fix that. Uh, you also need to put number of items equals zero here. Okay, so some of you who are not watching this video or not hearing me right now, your programs are not going to work. And the reason for that is because when I wrote this, I actually forgot to put this inside of my constructor and make it equal to zero. Because I'm using a Java example and Java automatically makes these things zero. And then when I wrote the program and I tested it, you know, the garbage number that was stored in number items turned out to be zero, so my program worked. But in your case, make sure you put the number of items inside of the constructor and make it equal to zero. Okay? I gotta, you know, I have to update that. Okay? Got it? So if program doesn't work, if it starts crashing or whatever, it's because your number of items isn't correct. Do not assume that this thing starts at zero like I did. Right? So number of items needs, you need to tell this you need to tell all these three things in the constructor. So I am saying rear is equal to negative one, I'm saying front is equal to zero, but the number of items I forgot because, yeah, I, th I was thinking job. So anyway, so the, the size, the, new, the size is five, we don't have anything in the array, front is zero, rear is negative one, okay? So now let's look at what happens when we insert something. I just have a question. What's up? What do you mean? What's your question again? So you know there's five elements in the array? Yeah. What yep. is it when you, you know when an element, I guess, starts at zero, and then you count zero, one, two, three, four, and that would be the size? I don't understand the question. Oh, that's the index. Okay. I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing initially, right? You have, a, you have an empty array. I'm putting zeros because there's nothing in it yet, right? Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an insert, okay? So we're going to insert some new value. What is the new value going to be? 10. I'm inserting 10, okay? As soon as I do that, 
First, I want to check to see if this is the wraparound issue. So we're going to ignore this for now. I'll tell you about it in a second. Uh, so assuming this is not true, right? Which isn't in the beginning. Rear Is rear equal to size minus one? Uh, rear is zero, size is four or five, five minus one, it's not equal, right? Zero is not equal to four. So this, this piece right here is not, we're not gonna consider it for now. So what happens is we're going to the rear plus plus. So as soon as we hit that, rear goes to zero. Okay, so rear went from, from one or negative one to zero. And this is my rear, this is my rear. Okay, so rear is your indicator for which one's at the end. And front, well, they're both the same right now because there's only one person, front and rear, same thing, negative one. I mean, zero. So far, so good. And then we're making Q array zero equal to that new value, and then we're increasing the number of items. So number of items is now one. Okay, so we got a 10 in there. Rear and front are both pointing to that element, and there's one there's one element in the array, okay? We're gonna go in there, we're gonna do another one, right? We're gonna insert a 20, right? Same thing, we're going to increase rear by plus one. That's this line right here. Then we're going to make Q array rear or Q array one equal to whatever the new value is, which is 20. So now we make this equal to 20. And then we go number of items plus plus, and that increases this here, okay? So that's your second one. And similarly, you do the third one, right? You increase the rear, right? Then you make the array three or two equal to the new element, which is this 30 here. Then you increase the number of items. This goes to three and so on and so on and so on. And I went all the way up to 50. So now the whole thing is full. Okay, we can't fill it up anymore. Uh, that's it, okay? Uh, and, there, and, and again, in, in this here actually, we're not checking to see if the array is full or if the queue is already full. That would be something good to do, right? I'm just, you know, I've stripped it down with all the, only the basics are here, right? But ideally what you would wanna do is you would wanna have an if uh, number of elements, or what do we call them here? Yeah, number of items uh, is equal to size minus one, right? If that's true, just get out of this thing. Don't even try to add anything because it's full. Okay. So, but we're not, we're not, we're ignoring that issue, right? So we're assuming that the person knows to add only as many as possible. No more. Okay. So when we're done with this, we have number of items five, because there's five things in there. Front is zero, which is this one. And rear is four, which is the last one, right? And that's it. Now we go to the next one. Uh, and I'll come back to this wraparound issue here with the if when, when, when I get to it, okay? So next thing that I'm going to do, and by the way, notice that rear moved to the right, right? So it kept, in, kept increasing and went zero, one, two, three, four, right? Those are the values of the rear. And now you're gonna see that as soon as I start removing things from the queue, the front is going to start moving to the right, right? So initially, we're starting with this, right? And then I'm going to go and I'm going to remove an element, okay? And again, in here, ideally, I should check to see if the thing is empty. If it's not, I mean, if it is empty, don't try to remove anything from it, but we're not doing that. I'm kind of like just focusing on the very basics. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, let me move this a little bit. Uh, temp is equal to QRA because we're going to be remo returning the thing that we're, we're, uh, that we're deleting, okay, or popping. So this is the 10. Temp is equal to QRA front. Front was zero, so temp is equal to this number 10. And then you're going to return that temp at the end, all right? Uh, if the front is equal to size, this is the wraparound issue. I'm going to ignore this if for now too. Uh, and then you just say number items minus minus, right? So all it is is if, if we could do this without the wraparound issue is you just literally grabbing the number, returning it, and then increasing this by, or oh, sorry, where's this? Oh yeah, front plus plus, this changes the thing to increase itself, right? We're using the zero 
right? Initially, we use the zero to pull this element out, and then we're increasing it to one. That's, the, that's how the plus plus works. And then at the end of it, we say number of items minus minus, and that decreases this thing now to four. So front has moved, and number of items has decreased. Okay, then we're gonna do another one. I'm removing the 20 from the queue. All I do is I call my remove function. I should have called it pop, right? So I remove, and what the remove is going to do is, again, it's going to store the value of temp equals Q array uh, one, because it was one initially, right? So the second one, and then it increases to two, right? So then the front increases to two, number of items decreases, and we get rid of this thing. And we keep repeating this thing until, I guess, we get something like this, okay? And this is where the weird stuff, stuff starts happening. Okay, so keep in track, keep track that uh, this is your front and this is your rear, okay? So since I'm not shifting anything in the array, where would I have to insert my next one? If I was inserting with the next number, what do I got? It's my next number, 60. Okay, where would 60 go in here? Where? The one that I'm having? Okay, and that's the wraparound issue, right? So basically what you have to tell it is, okay, if my rear, right? Remember, because we're adding at the rear. This is my front, this is my rear. The next number that I'm supposed to add is supposed to go like here somewhere, right? But there's no, no place there for it to be added. So what I have to do is I have to go and put the number in the front, okay? And that is the reason why we have this here. So what I'm saying is, if rear is equal to size minus one, which it is, right? Size is five, rear is five minus one, right? Four. If that's the case, make rear equal to minus one, okay? Then increase, so now it's minus one. You're increasing it by plus one, so now it's a zero. And then you're making Q array of zero equal to that new value, so you're inserting, you're inserting the 60 here. Does that make sense? Yes. In visual, you gave an example before, and just tracking the rear and the forward underneath with arrows as you step through this mm -hmm. really helps clarify that. Okay, so here's your, this is your uh, front, and this is your rear, okay? So rear has gotten to, rear is equal to four, right? Then I'm going to go in there and this is still my front, right? This is my front, but now the rear is this. Okay, better? Okay, so then, then we go to the next one. So rear is zero, right? This is index zero, then we're going to add another one. And basically now at this point, we, we dealt with the wraparound issue. The wraparound issue was basically the rear, rear ends up being all the way at the end and you have to move it all the way at the front, right? So that's, that's the purpose of this code right here. So if rear is equal to size minus one, if rear is all the way at the end, your rear equals minus one. So move it all the way at the front and then treat this thing as just the way you would normally. Rear increases goes up to one to zero, you're making Q array zero is equal to new value, and you're inserting this here. Okay, then you insert the next one. Okay, next one is, this is my rear, right? And this is my front. Okay, and then if I wanted to insert another one, then this is my rear, and this is my front. Okay, so that's the wraparound issue. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing things from this array, right? I'm gonna get rid of this one. My, so when I get rid of this one, this is going to move. I mean by this, I mean front is going to move. Then I'm going to remove this one. This is going to move. The front is going to move to all the way to the front. Okay, so that's, that's the magic that we're gonna to have to deal with now. So when the front just like my rear, rear here, when rear gets all the way to the end, we have to tell it to wrap around and start at the beginning, okay? Similarly, when my front moves all the way to the end, right? When I have the 50 here and I delete this thing, 
right? My front has to move from being here to all the way at the front, okay? And that's what the wraparound issue that I have in here. I basically remove these, right? I remove this one, then I remove the next one, all right? Let's let's uh, let's see what happens with that. So let's say I had this. So I'm starting with this, right? And then I'm going to do another pop. So I'll pop removes the 50, right? But my front, just like we said, where's that picture that I had? So my front now, where's my rear? Rear is this. This is my rear. This is my front, okay? So what do I know about the front? Well, it is going to increase its value every time, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna grab the 50. This line right here, tem is equal to QRA front plus plus. So we're gonna grab that thing with with the value of four. Then front increases because I have a plus plus in here. I'm using the value four. Then I'm increasing this thing to five, right? So on that same line, this thing goes to five, right? Which is basically here somewhere, okay? As soon as that happens, that next line right here, if front is equal to size, well, front is equal to five and size is equal to five, so now they're equal. Next thing is just say front is equal to zero. So now we grab the front and we put it here. Okay? And that's the wraparound issue. So we deleted this, my front went to zero, right? And that's what happens in the next step. Okay? So this is my front now. And this is my rear. Got it? Okay. And then once you keep adding to this, right, you can keep removing things and removing things, and then you can remove from the whole thing and leave it empty. And that's it. That's your that's your stack. I mean, cute. Okay. So other things that are really, really easy are look at what's at the front, look at what's at the rear, peak front, peak rear. Uh, checking to see if the thing is empty, right? Checking to see if the thing is full, checking to see the size of the queue. And those are pretty much the operations you need from a queue. Okay? Any questions? And here's your example in here. Uh, we have a queue of five. You're gonna insert a bunch of things into the queue. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, yeah, and then you can remove from it. And then there's some extra explanations here. Uh, double-ended queue. And what is a double-ended queue? Well, it's a queue that you can add from either side and remove from either side. So I showed you one way, right? And now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do it for a double-ended queue, which means that you're going to... Right now, we had a wraparound issue when my front or my rear get all the way to the right. Remember? So when the wrap the wraparound issue was basically either either of these gets all the way to the end, right? So when my rear gets all to all the way to the right, I gotta wrap it around so it goes to the beginning. Same thing with my front. All right, where's my front? Yeah, that was the that was the rear. I got lost. Anyway, so yeah, there's your this this is your rear wraparound issue, uh, and your front wraparound issue. Okay. Uh, and the, the thing is basically both of them get all the way to the last element and you have to tell them to go back to the first element. This is if we're doing your regular queue as is right now. If we're trying to add on both, if, if we want to be able to insert both ways and remove from both ways, now you have to deal with the wraparound issue where these, the, the F and the R, the front and the rear can be moving to the, are going to be uh, moving to the left. So that means the wraparound issue is going to be when they hit the left most spot, you got to wrap them around so they go back to the beginning. I mean, at the end. Make sense? Okay. I hope I hope it does because I think that's one of the assignments. Okay. So uh, this is empty, is full, all that size stuff stays the same. Yeah, double-ended queues. Uh, so that's a double-ended queue. You're going to have to do that. Later on, I... Uh, when we start doing link lists, I'm going to have you do a double-ended queue 
double link, double, double ended priority queue with link lists. So you, you either you're learning now or you're going to learn it when we get to the link lists. I suggest you do it now. So what is a priority queue? Well, priority queue is inserting an order, basically, right? If you have a bunch of numbers, you want to insert the specific number in a specific order, right? Just like if you have a line of people and maybe sometimes somebody cuts the line and gets all the way at the front because they're special or whatever, that will be a priority queue, right? You don't always go in the order that you're supposed to. Sometimes you just insert in a specific order. Okay, so that's a priority queue, insert in order, basically. Uh, uh, because some things have higher priority, I guess they have the example with a stack of envelopes or whatever, right? Uh, that's a priority queue, and then there's some pictures in there of how you insert things in a specific order, right? Notice how the numbers are all ordered, so if you insert a certain thing, it has to go in a certain order. Uh, so what are you going to do? Yeah, there you go. You're going to implement a double-ended queue, which is going to have an insert left, an insert right, and beware and handle any wraparound issues, which is pages five, six, seven on this thing, I think. Five, six, seven. Yeah, these are, these are the wraparound issues. The wraparound issues are better illustrated in this little word file that I have separate. Okay. So that is basically all I want to tell you. Uh, if you want more information, read uh, chapter 6 and 13 in Karano so that he confuses you more. And if you want an easier explanation, read chapter 4 of Lafour and my posted word files. Right? Lafour does a great job explaining these. Karano just makes things complicated for no reason, in my opinion. Okay? So that's your P6. Uh, so what do you have to do for P6? You have to submit the double-ended queue that I just mentioned and you have to do the char stack which is make an array of characters and show it in reverse using the stack. Two separate files. Two separate files. Okay? How are we using stuff like at a job down the line? Like what? Like, where does this come in? Uh, Honestly, you probably are not going to be using these particular ones. There's things that are built into the languages themselves. That's what Karano does. He uses like these standard templates that kind of works for everything. So you're probably not going to have to do uh, an actual writing a stack or writing a queue. But whenever you're getting hired for that job, yeah, I've seen hiring that hiring. is when they're going to ask you, hey, uh, write a stack. Yeah. It's not that hard. You saw it, right? It's like five lines of code. And if you can't come up with that you don't get the job yeah, but yeah data structures is one of those things that employers will ask you questions on the interview yeah no I had a I had one student who had a bachelor's in computer science and he was taking my Python class and they were asking him things like okay well like just to show me how you find the sum of something like just basic things and he'll, he'll, he'll try to use like the built-in Python functions that some things like some parentheses, the list, and they tell him, no, no, we we'll just write the loop. We want, just write it from scratch. All, all it is is like sum equals zero, four, I, whatever, go through all the elements and add them up. They, they want you to know the basics. It's, a lot of stuff is not, yeah. Yeah, but again, it really depends on the interview. Sometimes they'll ask you, a lot of times they'll ask you things about data structures because you need to know data structures you need to know object oriented you need to know data structures okay uh, so that's all I have for today any questions all right so I'm gonna stop recording if you have any questions send me your emails you know the drill come see me